Hello and welcome to Chronicles with Chronic Writer. Uh, we have come to the third episode of uh, Let's Talk Rocket Science in which I am asking a few questions on space technology to my father, uh, Engineer D. R. Salonayagam, who was the ex-CGM of LPSC ISRO. Let's dive directly into the episode. In the first uh, episode and the second episode, we talked about propellants, especially uh, solid, liquid and uh, cryo. Uh, let me get into one topic uh, that we didn't discuss in the first two episodes, that's the moon mission. We sent uh, two moon missions, one is Chandrayaan-1 in 2008 and then Chandrayaan-2 in 2019. One was a resounding success. Uh, one, yes, we did send, uh, but uh, there were problems in landing. So can you talk about uh, the moon missions that Indi Indi India did and why we did that? Any country which attempts to send uh, no, uh, rockets to interplanetary mission like moon mission or Mars mission, they are searching for something what is available in those planets. Right. Many uh, countries have al already started about talking about uh, moon mission and they already st planning to send uh, back mo uh, man to moon. So India also should not be late in that and with that my in mind the moon mission was to uh, Sanjayan 1 was planned in 2008. We had a very successful Chandrayaan-1. Chandrayaan-1 was uh, done through PSLV rocket. It was able to put a 150 kg orbiter around the moon and the mission was a very difficult one. Moon is around 384,000 kilometers away from Earth and uh, to reach moon perfectly. The, the day when we launched the rocket PSLV, the moon is in one location. When uh, when the rocket reaches the moon, traveling 300 lakhs 84,000 uh, kilometers, the moon is in another location, and we have to precisely re reach the moon orbit so that we will be able to circle the moon. And all these op operations are very critical and very very precisely it has to be done. And the uh, PSLV, the Chandrayaan one with PSLV gave us the experience how it has to be maneuvered. We were able to take our uh, lunar orbiter very very clearly to the 100 kilometer orbit and then we were also uh, make a moon impact probe on the moon to be one among the uh, our sixth country to have its uh, footing on the moon. Why is it so special because uh, already other countries have sent uh, done uh, moon landing so are we doing the same thing again? See, see what we are searching in moon is some uh, are we getting out anything out of moon? In uh, 1986, uh, uh, American University, they have found in moon soil rich in helium and helium is a radiation-free nuclear fuel. Maybe it may be a source for the future energy in the Earth. Okay. So all countries are going back to moon basically, basically based on this issue. So we also cannot lag behind, so we also should start our program towards moon so that we will we'll be able to do it one day, reach moon and bring whatever we want, that is helium-3 if necessary, so that we are one among the people who are capable of doing it. Okay, pa. So what about the failure in 2019? What happened exactly in Chandrayaan 2? See, Chandrayaan 2, 2 was a very big jump. PSLV-1 could only put 150 kg orbiter around the moon and uh, Chandrayaan 2 was attempted through GSLV Mark 3, which could put 2,700 kg orbiter around the moon. It had a very high, large number of payloads to uh, make experiments around the moon. And also it has got a lander and also a rover. The orbiter part of it, it is a great success and uh, the, all the experiment functioned very well and we were able, uh, getting all the information what we to, it was intended to be. The lander, uh, we had some problem. Listen, lander is a very tricky issue. From 100 kilometer orbit, we had to now come down to a 30 kilometer orbit. From there, the landing has to be attempted. So, it is something like a going at a very high speed and braking to almost zero velocity so that it can land safely. That was the, and the time traveled it, uh, between the 30 kilometer orbit down to mouth is a very small short period and uh, there we had some problem and uh, the lander did not land properly uh, so that part we can ca call it it is a failure but the orbiter part is a success okay so so that means the the 
the satellite is somewhere in moon but it's not getting us information no no orbiter is still, uh, the, 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 uh, say it worked uh, for the intended period it sent the signals the experiments in the orbiter worked well everything is fine the lander had some experiments to be done the rover uh, supposed to move around the moon soil and collect some data those things did not happen the orbiter portion was successful okay so let me come uh, to the next question i read that usa is planning to send man again to moon in 2028 probably do not know the exact year and uh, where do russia and usa stand compared to india in space technology right now i think we cannot compare like that they have huge rockets uh, very powerful rockets uh, very long long back uh, even the saturn rocket if you will take it see the maximum uh, thrust uh, uh, cryogenic what we have is a 25 ton uh, rocket we are which we are using mark 3 russians had the 100 ton uh, thrust rockets right in the 60s uh, uh, russians and uh, us people have this uh, rocket right in 69 when they built uh, the moon program and also they have the cluster technology where you can cluster for four or five these type of 100 ton cryogenic uh, uh, rockets to make 100 ton these are all the very fast advan- uh, advancements they have already done so we are now catching up we are it will take some time to really come near to that level but we are on the process So, what are the other few things that India is doing right now uh, when it comes to rocket science? Uh, I think, uh, though late, India started the semi-cryogenic program, uh, planning to develop a bigger rocket of capacity, maybe 200 to 250 ton thrust. I think uh, the Vikas engine has got a 70 ton thrust, and cryogenic engine at the moment has only 25 ton thrust, and this 200 ton thrust is a multifold jump as far as india is concerned but still it is not uh, very much sufficient for a manned program to moon it still once you jump to 200 ton it's uh, from that to jump to, to uh, higher clustering or higher uh, tons is not uh, higher thrust is not a big problem so i'll come to the final question uh, of this three part series episode on this uh, talk on rocket science uh, the question is how do we get into isro in uh, early days when i entered uh, as or it was through employ- there is advertisement in newspapers and uh, we had to apply and enter now i think this whole system concept has been changed maybe around 2000 2005 onwards it's changed there is a college run by isro itself there is called indian space technology at kolayamala thiruvananthapuram down south and uh, that they are take uh, the students are uh, taken based on the their j interest test and je marks that rocket is subjects tuned towards the document and they come out as aerospace engineers mm-hmm. and they are being recruited into isro second uh, p- part of recruitment is through all india recruitment uh, isro conducts almost uh, every year Uh, in uh, all india based interview based on a written test written by the students and once the students pass the written test they are called for an interview based on the written test and the interview they are selected and they are given a training for maybe 6 months then posted to different centers this is how there are two ways one can enter but at a higher uh, thing like an mtech or phd there are sometimes a few advertisements comes once in a while people enter through that route also so i hope that uh, i asked uh, uh, the questions that i had in the man and some of those questions were posed by my friends so i asked these questions to appa thank you so much appa for your time